Hunt urged to cap ISA limit at 100k in next budget. Fury at new Hunt tax raid on pensions and ISAs. Now, you may have woken up this morning and seen headlines like this today and thought, what the hell is going on? As major news outlets report that proposals are being considered to completely annihilate the benefits ISAs give to savers and investors. So currently, you can stick 20k a year into your ISAs, and that can grow as big as it wants, and you'll never pay any tax on it. But under these proposals, the suggestion is to cap that at 100k. That is a huge difference and would impact almost anyone who plans to save inside of these accounts long term. But deep breath, Damien. Headlines are headlines after all. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's to try not take these things on face value and always look for the wider context. But this is clearly a serious topic which would impact many of us. So it's worth talking about. So serious is this topic, in fact, that the think tank who is proposing these reforms called their report ISA, ISA, baby. Seriously, I'm not joking. Let's propose reforms to the ISA system and to help people swallow what is a very bitter pill, let's give it a jazzy name. I know, vanilla ice is hip with the kids. Let's rehash a joke from Halifax made seven years ago that will make us look current and approachable. Ice, ice. Anyway, the tone of this report can be summed up as follows. Hundreds of thousands of homes here in the UK have no savings at all, while the rich benefit from ISAs. So the government should cut the incentives or the benefits of ISAs for the rich and use that to fund incentives to get poorer families to save. Robin Hood economics, if you will. But it's this concept of who is rich that I'm struggling with and that we're going to look at a bit today. But first, I do think it's important to point out and just say where this report comes from. These headlines make it seem like Jeremy Hunt is saying this. I mean, you could probably argue so does my thumbnail, but anyway, it isn't him. It's a think tank. This one is called the Resolution Foundation. Founded in 2005, it started with the aim to improve living standards amongst middle and low income families. So yeah, it's a think tank suggesting this. But at the same time, I do think it speaks volumes to the fact that ISA allowances are one area that the government is going to be considering cutting in order to generate extra cash. But we'll come on to that. So the report's 38 pages and I've linked it below for you. But you could honestly cut this down to five or six pages because half of it is just pointless graphs and data that they present as evidence for what I would say are some of the most common sense observations ever. As an example, this lovely graph shows that people with less money save less money. Groundbreaking analysis from the stink tank. Look, I'm, I'm only messing around and behind this graph, there is actually an important point that we need to address. The report states that 750,000 households in the UK have no savings at all. But it also highlights that since 1980, the UK has had the lowest aggregate savings rate in the whole of the G7 in four out of every five years. We are a low saving nation compared to our G7 counterparts. And this graph shows that with the UK being this red line here and the other G7 countries falling in this blue range. Now, I'm just thinking out loud here, but how does kiboshing the benefits of an ISA help improve the overall saving rate of this country? Anyway, let's hear what they have to say before we harpoon them, shall we? Capping the overall lifetime value an individual is allowed to save into an ISA at £100,000 would only affect a small minority of people. With rising interest rates, it's projected that the government will be spending the equivalent of £2.2 billion per year by the end of 2023 on foregone income from capital gains tax for people with ISA savings over £100,000. Capping total ISA holdings at 100k would reduce that total cost by around half to 1.1 billion. Right, let's just first of all tackle this concept that this is only going to affect a small amount of people. 100k is a lot of money. Life-changing amounts of cash for most people, myself included. But what I take issue with with this report is how they say that basically anyone with 100k or more in an ISA is somehow rich. I made a video the other day where we talked about the importance of pensions and in it we discussed how if you're 40 or under, you're going to need millions in retirement savings just to sustain a decent quality of life. Let's say when you come to retirement, you have 100k in your ISA, that is going to generate you about 3k a year in sustainable income. I mean, hardly balling, are you? And given enough time, pretty much anyone can exceed this 100k limit. A typical family who work their arse off and make the commitment to invest 100 a month into the stock market and then get the average rate of return pre-inflation that is delivered for the last 100 years, which is 9%. They do that for 30 years and at the end of it, they're going to have 184k. That's a lifetime of dedication and consistent saving and sacrifice. And according to this think tank, they are now therefore rich. How dare you tuck away a portion of your income for decades while others can't afford to save anything? How can you sleep at night? I hope from my tone that you can tell I'm being a bit sarcastic here. But what I find most annoying is this report has an admission that a lack of savings is a crisis waiting to happen, while at the same time proposing changes that would just inevitably lead to another crisis. What exactly are the middle classes going to do in retirement if you punish them for saving more than 100k? The report goes on to say, 
Average market value for ISA holders with incomes of £150,000 or more are around £75,000, compared to £22,000 for ISA holders with incomes of 20 to 29k. But okay, let's take their lower end of the example of 20k and do the same calculation. We say that this person gets an average rate of return pre-inflation of 9% in the stock market. But let's just say that this person stops right now. So they don't add anything else. They just slap their 20k in, which is a full ISA allowance at the minute and they leave that for 20 years. They'd have 120K. Sorry, mate, you are now also rich. The suggestions in this report just feel like we're going after the wrong people. Let me just remind you what the main purpose of this think tank is. To improve the standard of living of lower and middle income families. They're punishing the wrong people. Stop making it out like someone on 29K a year and someone on 150K a year are living on different planets. They share far more in common with each other than billionaires who shelter their wealth in offshore shell companies via complicated legal structures in Panama, or these major corporations who take billions from the UK in revenue while paying only millions in tax. The super rich probably don't even use ISAs. The really rich benefit from tax structures and loopholes normal people don't even have access to, trusts and such. Or how about nom-dom status, anyone? So hypothetically, let's say this think tank got its way and they managed to cap the benefit of ISAs at 100K. What are they going to do with the extra cash? What's their suggestion to help the poorest families? It's called Help to Save. This is a current scheme that's already in existence. And the scheme is open to anyone in receipt of universal credit, working tax credit, and all those sorts of benefits. People who deposit into the scheme receive a bonus on their savings over two two-year saving periods, equal to 50% of the maximum savings level, with a £50 per month cap on deposits. The maximum bonus someone can receive is £1,200 over four years. This scheme currently costs the UK government about £43 million per year, which is low in the grand scheme of things. So the report says the best way to help these families to save more money is to expand this scheme. The most obvious way to encourage savings is to build on the existing policies which work well. As discussed, help to save has very high satisfaction levels with its users. But then they go on to say, this is brilliant, same paragraph. The biggest barrier to help to save being more effective is the low take up rates. These scripts write themselves. So the scheme that is really successful is only held back by the fact that nobody uses it. So let's expand it so even more people won't use it. Currently 10% of the people who are eligible for this scheme use it. Now maybe it's a lack of education or awareness, or maybe it's because people who really need savings and are struggling have no money to save, hence why they have no savings. A scheme that says, We'll help you save money by you saving some cash and we'll give you some extra is completely useless to people who have no room in their budget for savings at all. Am I being facetious here or something? Or is this just a glaringly obvious hole in this plan? Okay, I'm done bashing this report now. Let's just see what within the report actually makes sense and what could actually be adopted to help people. Now, while reading this paper, one thing stood out to me that I think is a major issue in this country when it comes to saving and investing. Throughout the document, besides on two to three specific examples, they use the blanket term ISA to apply to all types of ISA, even in examples where they're clearly discussing cash ISAs. I see it all the time. People put their money in a cash ISA as they're not aware of the benefits of a stocks and shares ISA. And this report serves as an example, really, to demonstrate that this problem exists even with the so-called experts. It's similar to saying that all tools in a box are the same when they're not. You know, different tools for different jobs. A stocks and shares ISA is a tool for building long-term wealth. A cash ISA is a place to park some cash. And yes, interest rates are rising, making the returns on cash ISAs better. I still question why anyone would park the majority of their wealth long-term in a cash ISA. But the cash ISA remains the most popular product out of the lot. And this graph shows this. You can see how the vast majority of funds paid into ISAs yearly go into cash ISAs. But anyway, the report consistently refers to ISAs while discussing cash ISAs. As an example, with rising interest rates set to significantly boost savings returns, we expect the total fiscal cost of foregone tax revenues and direct payments to households will be around 7 billion per year by the end of 2023-2024. I mean, I'm pretty sure that rising interest rates have not boosted stock market returns. These guys are talking about cash ISAs here. And I think herein lies one sensible logic in this report, even if they seem to be unaware of it. Over 100K in a cash ISA is a very different proposition to me 
than 100K in a stocks and shares ISA. Anyone who can afford to have that much cash just sat there at a rate lower than inflation, I question how much money they have elsewhere. I think if these reforms were to come in, they need to be targeted specifically at cash ISAs and not just lump in stocks and shares ISAs with them. Let people build long-term wealth inside of a tax trap stocks and shares ISA so this country just doesn't drive headfirst into a retirement poverty crisis. With cash savings, other tax breaks already exist for savings that mean most can have large amounts of cash without being taxed on it. For say a house deposit or a large emergency fund, and they're not then penalised. Tax-free personal savings allowance is an allowance most people get that allows you to get interest on cash up to a certain level tax-free. And here are the bans on screen. Money saving expert estimates a basic rate taxpayer would need £40,000 in cash at the current levels to exceed this tax-free allowance. That's a lot of cash. There just needs to be a clear distinction between stocks and shares ISAs and cash ISAs. And to treat them the same is a massive failing in my opinion. And this report hasn't really done a good enough job of separating them. They spent too much time on the title, not enough on the content, didn't you? But I can see how reforms to the amount of cash people hold inside of a cash ISA might be sensible. I mean, 40k in cash is loads for most people. And if you've got 100k in cash or more sat inside of a cash ISA, I would say you're either doing really well for yourself because you've got enough just to park that amount of cash on the side, or you should be considering better ways to effectively deploy those assets to generate a better return. Obviously, just my opinion. Which brings me on to the last point from this report. For the macro economy, low levels of savings may contribute to the UK's low levels of investment. So they're saying in the UK that low savings rates are hurting the UK economy. Well, I say to this that cutting incentives to invest inside of a stocks and shares ISA certainly won't help this. And the one or two months of living costs that you're aiming to provide the poorest families through these suggestions isn't exactly going to be deployed in the markets, is it? Instead, if you want to change things, reform the incentives around cash ISAs as discussed so as to motivate people to take the billions in cash we have sat in bank accounts, rotting, and just get it deployed into investments. At the end of the day, this is just a think tank, and headlines aside, I would be shocked if Jeremy Hunt actually did this. But I do think it's a nod to the fact that at some point, they're probably going to come for our ISAs. But I expect personally that to be more of a reduction in the total amount that you can pay into them on an annual basis. So, you know, taking it from 20k to say 15k, rather than this absolute nonsense from this think tank. Right, let's do a cheeky giveaway for any of the legends still watching at the end. I do appreciate you. 40 quid of cold hard cash for the most liked comment that can think of a better name for this report than Isa Isa Baby. I'll leave it open for one week and then I'll announce the winner via a community post. I've been struggling to think of one myself. MOP, cold as Isa? Nah, that's pretty rubbish, isn't it? Good tune though. Anti-up is better.